Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for making the time, Ram, and definitely great to catch up. And obviously, the, the reason why what we're bringing you on is um, obviously this COVID-19 stuff has thrown the world into a, a tailspin. Something I don't think any, you know, anybody could have really, uh, really prepared for. So uh, we, we believe the best thing that we can do, at least uh, in the short term, is to see what our customers are doing and then hopefully, you know, um, get some examples from you guys, how you guys are coping, and then have, have, have that as an example for other customers that are in the same situation. So, um, again, like, let me start off this, like, we, we have been using a lot of connections with uh, Sin7 only because we want to build resilience in our system. Yes. So, my master's, when I did my master's, I did a resilience study of supply chains, and that is why I back myself up. I always never depend on one source. So we have had a lot of, uh, so warehousing wise, we stocked up in multiple locations in the US alone to support the US sales. So last month we ran out of stock because of production reduction or production delays in China. We ran out of stock in one of our major warehouses, but we had built up stock in a secondary warehouse as a backup. That is what we primarily want to do is having multiple sources in every region where we sell. And All right, region- yeah. Before we get into that, maybe, you know, for, for the people that might be uh, watching, later on is can you uh you already touched on it a bit maybe can you talk a little bit about um your role and your background plus also a bit of background on anova so to give everyone yeah. context so oh definitely yeah so anova we are a company which sells a, a, a cooking device a cooking hardware to support companies uh, to support homes to cook food a restaurant quality food at, at a reasonable price at home and your convenience that's our major uh push. We want to support people to be able to cook good food at home. And I at ANOVA am a supply chain manager. I technically run the operations at ANOVA, global operations across our supply chain for the entire company. And we try to ensure that we can support our customers as much as we can and to give a good experience of cooking. So we develop products to help them to cook and we try to support them as much as we can in terms of application data and stuff to make sure that they can improve on cooking or help speed up the cooking process and stuff. Right. Does okay. Uh, for, for those that haven't seen the Anova appliance, it's a, it's a cooking device you effectively put into a pot, like an element. And I guess the amazing thing about it, it keeps, it keeps the, um, it keeps the temperature um, and helps yes. people do, I guess, a lot of uh, sort of cooking, sous vide cooking, I guess it's like boiling, um, boiling various foods and yeah so I, I guess the, the the shift towards the home um will come to back in a second must must be actually good for you guys but before we touch on that you know obviously in january and february where yeah. i guess that the virus sort of was more of a, a based in china um did you guys um encounter any supply chain issues during sort of that period so we did so because this came at a time when we were during the chinese new year so right. we did add up stock before the Chinese New Year burst out. So we did improve a little bit of production, increase the production output before the holiday started, which is what right. we do all the time to support for the next one month of no production and delays in shipping. So we had a little bit of stock build up, but because of Chinese New Year, we did have one of the few products of ours did go out of stock and we are unable to support that. And we're trying to do everything we can to support that product. Our major uh, product, which is the Nano, which we call it, yeah that went out of stock in the in middle of Feb- January, February, in that range right. before. And we ran out of stock. Right now, it's still coming back up. It is difficult without that product because that's where we go to mass market. It's the lowest cost product of our side. And that has been a little bit difficult, but the demand for that also goes up because everyone wants to buy cheaper products. They don't want to yes. pay a lot of money for a high expensive, high quality product. So when, when do you think that might come back into stock so we have about four containers in ocean right now they started shipping in mid early of march so we have shipments on the route right now which is going to support the sales by the next two weeks so we are back with production early march so that's been a little bit um again a month of no sales is bad because we dropped stock we were managing that very like individual unit by individual counting and selling to where, where we sell so we are stocking that up to make sure that we can survive the time which has been a little bit difficult. It's not that easy to say to a retailer saying, hey, I can't support your sale. Sorry, I won't fulfill this purchase order. We've had to okay. cancel purchase orders because of that reason. But in, in, in theory, early April, you'll be back into being a yeah, sell that uh, product. Yeah, early April, exactly. True, yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, that that 
Um, I guess, yeah, the Chinese New Year did sort of um, most product companies have already planned for, for a month of no production anyway. So it just so happens that that hit yeah. the virus at the same time. Exactly. Okay. Well, that that's pretty cool. So, and um, South China was not that badly hit compared to North China. That is another right, thing. Okay. So our, our, our production is all based in Southern China, closer to Hong Kong. So the production right. was not that badly hit, like how the Northern province like Wuhan and Shanghai and all got hit because they are closer to the North and middle of the country. Southern processes, there were more compliance requirements which delayed production beginning, but it did not mean that we did not have production when we wanted to have production. It was more about the staging of it was different. Right, I guess now that, I guess the pandemic has sort of hit squarely into the US, has that sort of, I mean, you, you actually don't have your primary product to sell. So based upon the other products you do have for sale, is this pandemic sort of negatively or possibly positively no. impacting your sales? So so we did reduce the sales. Again, we didn't run out of fully out of stock. We did, yep. so we had inventory in other warehouses, which we moved to these warehouses to support that. Like from our warehouse right. in China, we moved it to the US. We had stocked up there. Right. So we did not literally run out, but we we're not like in full velocity selling. That's right. the difference. Okay. I want to make sure that. So again, I built resilience in the structure of supply chain to ensure that we don't ever run out of stock. That is already built in. Right. We had right. that we plan ahead of for that. Uh, we have a warehouse in China, which had excess stock, which we moved it here because we planned for production being slow because of the COVID-19 situation. We immediately took a decision to move inventory across from warehouse to warehouse, which we do that now and then to ensure that we don't run out of stock in one place or the other. Right. That's so again, that, I, yeah. And, and in terms of your revenues, do you, is, is it, have you been negatively impacted or, or positively or no, again, no change in sales? As of now, not much of impact. We had reduction a little bit, but not right. really impact in sales, I would say, because again, there is stores closed. We are not having outlets to sell because of stores being closed. Right. That has reduced the take, like inventory being taken out by retailers. But right. overall, uh, the targets are still running. Best Buy is still open. They're still open. They're still working on online. Online sales has become higher in these companies, which is technically competing with Amazon. And Amazon's structure has also changed because they don't want to buy any more products other than essentials. So right, our other okay. retailers are getting advantage because of this reason. Like Target and Best Buy are buying more because Amazon cannot fulfill orders anymore. Right, okay. Uh, so that is a shift that we have seen in the retail market. So, I mean, you guys sell online, you guys sell globally, you guys obviously sell to a number of big box retailers, you know, the Targets, yes. Best Buys and yes. Amazons. So obviously if one is not buying, uh, another channel is. So that that yeah. that helps. So you've also there is a lot of um, redundancies right. in in your channels as well. We did we, again. That was technically not on purpose, but it helped us in the situation. Okay, good. So is, is there anything you guys have had to do in the short term uh, to make sure you you remain strong in this this particular situation? Um, short term, we have to just ration out the inventory we have. That's what we right. do right now, rationing it out, making sure that we are fulfilling our key partners to ensure the relationship maintains. And uh, other than that, just wait for production to come and we slow down our sales and promotions to help that piece. Right, okay. So is there anything, I guess, now that you look back, you would, you would uh, change? Let's say everything goes back to what we call a new normal. Is there anything you would change um, now, now that you've been through this situation? Again, I would say 99% no. Right. Again, I've, again, that's what I said, right? When we build supply chains, we have to build with resilience, which is why we didn't have much of an issue. Just that we would have planned a little bit of the stock when we planned them to procure them from China rather than push them out to later in the year, we would have put them earlier, like one or two SKUs, not the entire 20 SKUs that we have or 30 SKUs we have. One or two SKUs, which were, we were seeing uptick, we couldn't adapt that fast, which is what I would change in the future adapting to the change of market faster than what we did this time. Right. Okay. So, cool. um, so what, what do you see are maybe some of the opportunities that, that they will actually sort of pop up, um, you know, af after this all gets, um, um, you know, af Amazon, after we make it through all this. Amazon will still come back strong. That is definitely yep. there. Amazon is going to see a big uptick in sales because of not buying stock for so long. Uh, that is definitely something I'm already expecting. So I have to build stock for that right now. That's what I'm doing because Amazon is not buying any non-essential product for the next month. Right. Not no. So they stopped buying, they stopped selling them, not promoting them anymore, which is a good thing in disguise because then our future sales will be much higher. 
because but it also means that customers won't buy because of the recession like situation right now in the us uh, so it has to be it is played out i think there's nothing that we can plan right now without knowing anything from the retailers which is what my biggest concern at this point is yeah i think one of the things you probably uh, talked about earlier and i'll just bring it up again is uh, i think because you you've got a lower price product and a higher price product so i guess it's always good um, if you're selling any product to have different price price points um, just so because you never know um, what happens in an environment like this they, they just want something cheap and easy that they can start using as well so that that's a yeah. strategy you guys have already put in place but that's probably working out for you as well we wanted to show customers like you can go at a lower level and go pro level so a chef right. wouldn't buy a smaller product and we sell to chefs as well so we did categorize the market to capture different parts of the market and right now the lower part of the market is where we can actually push more units and put more sales because nobody's ready to pay the higher price anymore because of the market situation that's what we had planned a bit four years ago, I think we planned for the strategy and we finally executed it this year, last year. And we're going to even try to improve that over the next two years is what we're trying to. Cool. So, uh, I mean, on a personal note, is anything you're doing, you know, uh, for fun so you can remain sane during this lockdown period? <laughs> Again, for me, sane is to make sure that things don't fall apart in work right, okay. because I, don't want, I, don't, I want to have a good sleep but that does not mean that I sleep sometimes because I have to be awake in China time which is right, something okay. I do still other than that for fun we can't go out, you can't go to the gym anymore we can't do anything that front so maybe just spend some time on TV which I hardly do so that's what I'm doing so you just what keep on working home? again I essentially start late in the day but I go on till late in the night and I keep working that's the only thing I can find because in this market, to be honest, there is a lot of difficulty. People are getting laid off in the US. If you have yes, heard of yes. it already, there's about a lot of layoffs. So our company is trying to look into that piece, but we have to also help the company to make sure that they don't do that. So right. there are things that we do to how to help the company. So all of us in the company, about 40 of us in the company right now, all of us are doing the same thing. We work, 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 literally. We work almost 10 12 hours a day to ensure that everybody is supported and to help improve the structure we have to reduce all the cost cuttings where we can to help the company stay positive during this time. Oh, great. I mean, yeah, I, I think, well, you, you're a young man, so working, working ridiculous hours is still possible for you. So um, is, is any sort of fin <laughs> final words of advice or maybe encouragement you would uh, have for companies uh, similar to yourselves? Again, make sure that you guys, again, everyone is doing this already or most of them. Please make sure you get FaceTime with people in your company rather than stay on Slack or messages only. Getting a FaceTime does uplift your mood. And we have seen that in our company. Everybody, every day we see each other at least once or more, more than once on video chat. All of us at the same time, we do all hands at least multiple times a day to ensure that everybody is keeping positive and feeling positive about it. And we think of new ways to entertain each other by saying, hey, what do you like to eat today on Cheesecake Factory? Find a menu and find which one you like the menu. Like different, different things we come up with. Like the other day was the bingo thing on, you have seen the Google that have had the bingo. I'm pretty sure right. people would have, yeah. So things like that, we keep us entertained to make sure that we are communicating to each other because that's something personally that we feel that we have not had the face time with friends and coworkers, which is something we want to do to ensure that everybody is sane during the situation. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, we're, we've tried to make the rule that we should turn the video on each time um, we talk to someone. And obviously, you've, you've seen my background. I put a bit of effort to make sure um, I'm looking sane and healthy and clean. And um, okay, Ram, yeah, really great. Thank, thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, hopefully we get to talk uh, sometime soon under better sure. circumstances. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, Ram. Have a good day, sir.